Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork Note Game video. Today's video is dedicated to some day one lessons for clan battle. Missed the old Kauri because old Kauri could lip sync my pretty much voices. Three star Kauri cannot. Anyways, let's go into the clan battle. Talk about a few things. So if you go into details right here, you can actually view where your clan is currently rated at. Right now we're at 41st. I did not think we were going to hit this rank whatsoever. Let's go to ranking rewards and talk about a few things. So these are going to be the different ranks. These are the pretty much reward breakdowns that you can get, right? And I was hoping that we were going to be at least above like 300. Well, we're in top 50 somehow. By the way, we're still a semi-casual guild. All I'm doing is forcing everyone to attack. Even that can be somewhat of a burden. All right, so if you want to know who is actually attacking, you just go into this in clan tab and you can see here everyone who's attacked. So for example, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I know 27 people have attacked. I think one of the biggest things for clan battle is just pure participation. It's not even about autoing, manualing, or trying to like build the best team. If you can at least like participate and have more people in clan battle, I think a numbers games is definitely the thing that's currently allowing people to stay in certain ranks. So within the Discord, there's actually people like showcasing like their different ranks and stuff. And I know some folks who are like around the 2200 range, they have like a half empty guild and only like four or five, like a handful of people are attacking yet they're still you know within this range 1500 to 3000 so first clan battle i think if you have like a full group of 30 and everyone's attacking you're probably going to be within like the 151 to 300 range and then of course for folks who are actually like trying and you know just doing auto and have like better teams you'll probably sit around the 51st to 150th range it's actually not that hard apparently from what i've been seeing because these are half empty guilds you know able to pretty much hit like the top 2000 and they're not even like you know trying to use optimized teams or anything crazy like that so I, I think clan battle is definitely very open to like actual top rankings. Don't be too afraid of it. I can say without a doubt, you should definitely tackle it. So let's go ahead and cover a few more things as far as clan battle goes and talk about like some tips I have. So if you go here into the personal logs, this is one of the things that I've been doing to pretty much track my different damage. These are all like my three runs. I'll showcase like all three runs and talk about it, my timing and everything. But for the most part, you can also do things where you do trial runs, right? The reason why I wanted to cover this is because I am recording my damage, recording the different teams that I use. You can see here, I'm using like a plethora of different teams. I even tried one where it's just Kauri in the front. Note here, I didn't deal as much damage as pretty much my June ones. Mostly because of the fact my June ones, they had more like three stars and it was just better timing. With my Kauri tank, I only had like a two star Mitsuki and a two star Kauri or Eriko. So, you know, it didn't really work out in my favor too much, right? And the things that I really want to cover is that Mitsuki is just a hardcore carry during clan battle in some situations because her defense down is so easy to pretty much detect. We'll talk about it more during like the actual like videos where we're showcasing the runs, but this Field of Thorns effect, it's 96. 96 is absolutely insane. If I had her at three star, I think it would be a little bit higher or if I had her at level 80. This, if you didn't know, pretty much the max defense down that you can grant against an enemy is going to be 100, all right? So her being able to apply Field of Thorns on an enemy with the maximum output of damage. I highly recommend raising up your Mitsukis if you haven't already. She's an absolute monster in this situation. And then Shinobu, she left, leaves some things to be desired be, just because like her Hungry Wraith is only 12. And then, you know, her Phantom Terror is only at 34. Honestly, I wish it was a little bit better, but it's better than nothing. And it pairs well with like pretty much Makoto and stuff. Makoto, by the way, is a very interesting character. You're going to have to time her Heroic Howl with her Woven Ren. All right, let's go ahead and cover this plant boss. I have noticed that he is the easiest one to technically deal with. So if you want someone to face tank against this boss, this would be like the one where you run Kauri and no June or no tank in particular, just so that you can cast more UBs because when you get hit, you get more TP that works out in Kauri's favor because Kauri can pretty much cast more skills and Kauri is kind of like the MVP during our clan battle because she can 
she has the potential of dealing the most damage and it's not just because she is waifu and maybe it does have to do a little with waifu but the thing is is the more she gets hit the better she gets and the more she pretty much steamrolls all right that's what i'm trying to say so note here you can see mitsuki's ability right there that circle that 96 defense down all right so whenever that circle is up i want to cast my ubs because so long as that circle is up i technically know that 96 defense down is currently going to be appearing now now note here that I casted my UB right there because I knew that circle was there and I casted Kaori's ult and I did 26k. Now a couple of things when you are casting Makoto's ult right, her union burst in particular, make sure to time it where her heroic howl occurs and then you do her union burst alright because you can actually cancel Makoto's heroic howl after you pretty much do or before you do your union burst which is really terrible because you're technically missing out on that minus 100 defense down max capability right so you remember that you cannot exceed that max defense down of minus 100 it's pretty much capped at that rating and once you hit it you will deal the most optimal damage for your character so ideally you have minus 100 on the boss constantly and you can see here we're pretty consistent right there i pretty much wait for that circle it's fine to pretty much cast everything here because i know there's two defense down procs which is over 100 so i did makoto i did kauri I know that circle is still up, so I'm going to use Miyuki's ult. Miyuki is kind of terrible in this situation because you really don't need a tank and she does terrible damage. Monica does way better with her buffs and speed and stuff. And note that Monica only does her speed buff once. We pretty much wait for that circle to appear again before Monica does her thing. And you see there, she does pretty terrible damage. Even Mitsuki at two star does more damage than her. And you know, that's kind of terrible in some ways, but at the end of the day, we finish, we deal enough damage, like subpar in my opinion. I feel like I could have done a little bit more but I did what I can, 425 for me is suitable enough. Just note that I'm not using like those teams where it's like 500k because it messes up my other teams where you have to have at least two defense downs. You saw there I had Shinobu and Makoto and we're gonna talk about this one because the bear one, you do not face tank because this one is very difficult to run. This boss will absolutely show you like what it means to get hurt. Like this dude is ripped and he will kill you, all right? So note here, my triggers for this team was around the 51 second mark. That's when I knew Makoto was supposed to pretty much do her attacks. I am running this at two times speed and then I slow it down right at the 50 second mark because I know that's when I'm pretty much supposed to attack. So I use Nozomi's UB, note that her UB pretty much grants you buffs, and I wait for that howl to be over, and then at 51 seconds directly I cast the UB, and then I go straight into the Mimi. I tried running Hiyori here, but Hiyori would die, so I fully raised my Mimi like on the spot today because it was totally worth it, and I know at 45 seconds I need to cast Shinobu, and then for pretty much Suzuna, it is okay to cast her skill before her other skill procs, because if you wait just a second, Second, she won't be able to cast her UB at the very end at the two second mark. So you can see here, we're pretty much going through this. I'm trying to speed up the time. And then we are here right at the 18 second mark. I slow things down back again. I pretty much cast Nozomi's UB and you saw Makoto did her heroic howl. So that means my Makoto's UB is free to pretty much cast. We go there. We're at the 14 second mark. This thing is a little bit weird because the timing is a little bit off. I'm used to it being at 11 seconds and it sort of throws my damage for a loop a little because usually I can hit 300k but I don't hit 300k for this one. So I know usually Shinobu is supposed to cast it at the four second mark. And you can see here, it, it sort of affects things because what happens here when Susanna does this, right? She doesn't deal optimal damage because I don't have a hundred defense stacks, right? And these are like the small little nitty gritty details that like will affect your overall like clan battle experience where it doesn't really matter too much how much damage you're dealing. It's just getting to know like the seconds, the in-between times that you can pretty much do optimal damage, right? So if you want to do like a trial run, let's just go ahead and do one for the sake of it, just so y'all can see. And we're just gonna run this on pure auto, right? Just, just for the sake of it so we can see something because i want to showcase this one last detail just auto this 
So when you are autoing your team like this, you're hands free, you're not doing anything, you're just watching. This is how you know your team will be at least somewhat useful, right? Because you know that your team will deal a specific amount of damage. And if you deal anything below that auto damage, technically you are not doing a proper amount of damage, right? So you want to avoid having auto teams that deal more damage than your manual teams. And also your auto teams will pretty much compare to different auto teams. By that, I mean, when you go into your personal logs and you save them, you will know that team A will perform better than team B just based off of auto. You don't even have to run your teams on manual just to get the best damage output to know that the team works, all right? Just compare pretty much the teams based off of auto, all right? Don't, you don't have to try hard Princess Connect. You don't have to do, you know, sit in voice chat and, you know, time the seconds like we were talking about. Just do the auto. You can see here, my team dealt 280 and I was able to deal like 290 via manual. So it was like a 10K difference. Over time, that makes like a big difference. But if we go into personal logs, we save it and then it's all good. Let's go next right here. And then let's go ahead and go into personal logs. Then we can pretty much see, oh, is this team good for bear? Is there another team that I can use and pretty much compare? And that's what I pretty much did with my trial runs where it's like, oh, I know this team was pretty good. This is the team that I wanted to run for Creeper. I wasn't able to run it because, you know, obviously the someone cleared it before I could, so I couldn't run this team. So I ended up doing like the one for Bear, but so on and so forth. I kept running teams right here. Like here, I did 262, I did 265, 289, and eventually I found my groove with this one when I finally got the seconds right. And that's like the things that you sort of do over time where you compare different teams you can see here I had Hiori on this team and then I had like pretty much Susana and then like Tamaki now the Hiori team didn't do as much as the Tamaki team right but then you jump here where I removed Tamaki in general and I did way better these were all auto runs right so Tamaki for my team specifically against the needle creeper it hurt me quite a bit so these are like the little things just comparing the different auto teams and optimizing which one you think is going to be best but anyways if you made it this far into this video consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment i appreciate you being here good luck on your clan battle you don't have to try hard in order to be good at it you just have to pretty much auto and test out your teams and see which one works and save it into your personal log thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one